Hello everyone, this time we matter here back with another mock. This time it's the Aston Martin Vantage. This is based on the newer models after 2019, so definitely not one of the older generation versions of the Vantage. Uh, I decided to make this mock just because I like the basic version of the Vantage. I did buy the GT3 set, but um, I didn't really like the racing livery, and I mainly bought that set for the Valkyrie to be honest. Um, and after I got the Valkyrie, that's when I sort of started to appreciate uh, the Vantage itself and Aston Martin cars in general, and um, especially the front engine ones. So I decided to make this mock, right? And I wanted to just, one of the major reasons why I wanted to make this mock is because I really like this light design from the original GD3 set. And I just wanted to represent that in mock form, um, but in obviously the basic version of the Vantage. Um, there were several uh, interesting building techniques, I think, throughout this mock, like, for example, how I got those tiles there, and I'll cover all of them in a lot of detail. I'll show you exactly how I built them in this mock, uh, in this video. Um, so, yeah. So, let's start with the front, then. The front, um, I think, is a very important part for any Aston Martin car. The way you get the grille and mouth section uh, is very important because it gives the car a lot of its personality and obviously the lights are here are printed from the original GT3 set. I think they're great prints. They look exactly like um, the Aston Martin lights. So uh, definitely knew that I was going to use those in the beginning, but um, I didn't know how to make the, everything else except for this curved piece here. This curved uh, 1x2 tile I knew would be perfect to capture the corner top corners of the mouth and um, I started with just um, looking at where I can place those which position would they look good in and I knew that they had to be angled outwards slightly right like how it is here so I knew that I'd be attaching them probably with a clip so I'll show you that here that's the clip that I'm using there let's just pull this up slightly let's see a bit more of that Obviously, the fact that there are no studs on top means that this can angle itself freely and I could choose which angle I wanted it to be in. Um, so when I, when I um, decided I was going to use this uh, slope and this clip, then I started moving it around and trying to find which position it would best be suited, uh, placed at. And let me just show you. If I remove this hood and this piece as well, See, it's attached with that uh, stud with a bar on top and I just moved that around until I felt like it was in a good position and that happened to be in between these uh, the four studs beneath it so I naturally just decided to use a 2x2 two two jumper and that's how that fit in there um, and so yeah that's how that's made this splitter at the bottom is a very simple sub assembly so obviously you've got the two rounded tiles uh, inverted tiles there bracket piece here with a couple of uh, pieces just to give it some detail and this is the bottom so with the front section they're all really simple building techniques right um, and I started with getting this section done then getting the uh, lights to go where I want them to go so if I put this one back here as well right so once these were done I went down um, and just I noticed that okay so if you look at this you see that the mouth um, top fits in quite naturally um, and I can just finish this off with a flat piece on top but the walls of the mouth are still too thin they're only one stud high so it needed to be deeper right so that's when I use this uh, bracket to uh, basically just estimate where I needed the bottom of lip of the car to be so I placed that here with obviously some building from this from the side in there right and I thought okay that's a good height and it's also not touching the ground and afterwards I filled out the sides with the pieces that I've just showed you so I've basically just walked you through my entire build process this happened in over the course of maybe two three hours but 
that was the sort of chronological order of everything and how it went together. And obviously this hood just goes up here. It's a very simple build, this hood. So that's how that's a really detailed walkthrough of how I achieved the front of the car, right? So next we go into the center, just real quick. Uh, wanted to get that nice um, hourglass shape. This was also present in the original GD3 set. I just did it a bit differently because I wanted to get as much interior space as I can. So you can see the two minifigures, even the lady with the ponytail fits in there very comfortably. This uh, piece right here isn't, um, it's able to be pushed down a bit still. So she has a lot of space in there. Um, I used the new Speed Champions, um, uh, these slope pieces here, so that I can have enough space to fit in this massive window pane here. And there's also, um, as you can see there, a bit of luggage in there. So there's a decent amount of luggage space. Um, and I just like having a lot of light in the car to begin with as well. Um, now, with the back, uh, one of the most challenging techniques, uh, or not techniques, but just builds in general, is that I had to get, <coughs> sorry, pardon me, um, this sort of like hexagon shape that's here. So if I show you a picture of the real car up there, um, it's very different from the GT3. Uh, the GT3 has a very simple diffuser, whereas this uh, has that half hexagon shape, which is really complicated to capture. And I managed to capture that using these um, cutoff slopes. And if you look at this angle, you can see that the hexagon is there. Unfortunately, obviously from the front, uh, I mean, from the back, just straight up like that, it doesn't really look like a hexagon but I'm fine with it because I think this piece right here, positioning that where it lines up exactly with the bottom of the fender piece as well, just makes it blend in really nicely. So if you look at it from this angle, it looks really clean, right? Just continues the fender pieces along. And when you look at it from here, then you get that hexagon shape. So I'm very rarely gonna be looking at the car directly from the back like this anyway. And I don't think it looks bad either. It's just not 100% accurate from the back. Uh, the bottom diffuser I got using this uh, common Speed Champions piece right there, attached upside down. So uh, with the upside down building, there's actually a lot of in, uh, a lot of it involved here. So if I remove this, and I also remove this, I'm trying not to tear everything apart by removing this. Yeah, you can see I used the new one by two. Um, it's like a brick, but in the middle of the brick, there are two bars. Um, it's starting to be quite common actually in a bunch of sets. And obviously with clips, I can turn that upside down. And with the new uh, one by one by two thirds brick with stud on side as well, the new snot piece from the Speed Champions cars, um, putting that upside down lines it up perfectly with these one by one bricks with a side on, uh, with a stud on the side as well. So they're perfectly lined up. And that gives me the connection point for this piece and uh, four connection points for um, the, the um, sub-assembly that gives that hexagon shape, right? So if I just put this back here, so it would attach like that. But obviously I'm not attaching it now because I also got the sub-assembly for the lights, um, which fits in right there, as you've seen before. Now, real quick, I want to show you as well how I got those tiles to be almost like they're floating in there. So if I just remove uh, this and the minifigures as well. <coughs> Pardon me, I'm still recovering from uh, flu. Um, this uh, canopy can angle outwards just to let more light in. And you can see if I just focus on that section there and I turn the brightness up a bit, um, how those tiles are attached. You've got that bar with the stud on them um, and that connects to a clip and a stud with the bar on top as well. So all of those connections give me a lot of flexibility with where I, where I can place this uh, tile specifically. And um, obviously it's quite precarious, but uh, these one by two tiles, they fit very snugly and also they're very small and light. So even if they're precariously attached, they don't fall off easily at all because um, they're light and they fit into the overall car 
uh, really snugly. So it's not easy to knock them off. Um, so yeah, those are, I think this and the way the front was designed, um, they're some of the most advanced techniques in this mock. And yeah, I feel like I've just showed them quite well. So hopefully that gives you some inspiration in terms of mocking on your own as well. So uh, close this up, put the main figures back in. Oh, trying to do this um, with, from around the camera, it's kind of difficult. I think I'll just do this later. I'm just close to close the car. And yeah, so. That was the Aston Martin Vantage uh, mock that I have here. Um, that is it for today. And please look forward to my upcoming mocks as well. Um, previously, as I've mentioned, I have an Urus mock. And I can just show you a quick glimpse of that. Um, this is what it looks like. Just made it black. Fits in four minifigures at least. Um, and a lot of focus on the interior with that one. Just need to finish off a bit of the exterior. So yeah, please look forward to more of my mocks and I will see you guys in the next one.